Prevenient grace, or enabling grace is a Christian theological concept rooted in Arminian theology, though it appeared earlier in Catholic theology. It is divine grace that precedes human decision. In other words, God will start showing love to that individual at a certain point in his lifetime. Prevenient grace is embraced primarily by Arminian Christians who are influenced by the theology of Jacob Arminius or John Wesley. Wesleyan Arminians believe that grace enables, but does not ensure, personal acceptance of the gift of salvation. Wesley typically referred to it in 18th-century language as prevenient grace. In current English, the phrase preceding grace would have a similar meaning. Topic. Definition Topic. Arminian Free Will Baptist theologian Robert E. Passarelli says that the word prevenient in prevenient grace comes from an archaic English usage meaning anticipating, coming before, or preceding. Passarelli says that a good synonym for prevenient grace is enabling grace. As it enables sinful mankind to believe, the United Methodist Book of Discipline 2004 defines prevenient grace as the divine love that surrounds all humanity and precedes any and all of our conscious impulses. This grace prompts our first wish to please God, our first glimmer of understanding concerning God's will, and our first slight transient conviction of having sinned against God. God's grace also awakens in us an earnest longing for deliverance from sin and death and moves us toward repentance and faith. The Church of the Nazarene has made prevenient grace one of its 16 articles of faith found in the Nazarene Manual. The manual declares on behalf of the Church of the Nazarene, We believe that the human race's creation in godlikeness included ability to choose between right and wrong, and that thus human beings were made morally responsible, that through the fall of Adam they became depraved so that they cannot now turn and prepare themselves by their own natural strength and works to faith and calling upon God. But we also believe that the grace of God through Jesus Christ is freely bestowed upon all people, enabling all who will to turn from sin to righteousness, believe on Jesus Christ for pardon and cleansing from sin, and follow good works pleasing and acceptable in his sight. Predecessor to the Nazarene Articles of Faith are the Articles of Religion, which John Wesley adapted for use by American Methodists. With very similar language between it and Article 7 of the Manual, Article 8 states. The condition of man after the fall of Adam is such that he cannot turn and prepare himself, by his own natural strength and works, to faith, and calling upon God, wherefore we have no power to do good works, pleasant and acceptable to God, without the grace of God by Christ preventing preceding us, that we may have a goodwill, and working with us, when we have that goodwill. Emphasis added, language that was taken directly from Article 10 of the 39 Articles of Religion adopted by the Church of England in 1563, Article 8 is official doctrine not only for the United Methodist Church, and its counterpart for the Church of the Nazarene, but for many other Wesleyan denominations as well, such as the African Methodist Episcopal Church, African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church, the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church, the British Methodist Church, and other denominations associated with the Holiness Movement. Thomas Oden of Drew University defines prevenient grace as the grace that begins to enable one to choose further to cooperate with saving grace. By offering the will the restored capacity to respond to grace, the person then may freely and increasingly become an active, willing participant in receiving the conditions for justification. Infant baptism is seen in Methodism as a celebration of prevenient grace. Although infant baptism is important for the life journey of the faithful disciple, it is not essential. <inaudible> Wesleyan-Arminian theology Jacobus Arminius affirmed total depravity but believed that prevenient grace enables people to respond to God's offer of salvation. Concerning grace and free will, this is what I teach according to the scriptures and orthodox consent, free will is unable to begin or to perfect any true and spiritual good, without grace. This grace prevenit goes before, accompanies, and follows, it excites, assists, operates that we will, and co-operates lest we will in vain. In John Wesley's sermon, On Working Out Our Own Salvation, sermon number 85, Wesley stated that prevenient grace elicits.
the first wish to please God, the first dawn of light concerning his will, and the first slight transient conviction of having sinned against him." Wesley insisted on prevenient grace as a solution to two great problems in Christianity, the belief of original sin and the Protestant doctrine of salvation by grace alone. Wesley thought that prevenient grace enabled the doctrines of original sin and salvation by grace to co-exist while still maintaining God's sovereignty and holy character as well as human freedom. Most Methodist hymnals have a section with hymns concerning prevenient grace, most recently the United Methodist Hymnal 1989. One of the best-known hymns written about the doctrine is Charles Wesley's Come, Sinners, to the Gospel Feast, which includes the lines Ye need not one be left behind, for God hath bid all humankind. The invitation is to all. Emphasis added. Charles Wesley's, Sinners, turn, why will you die? Continues the theme. Sinners, turn, why will you die? God, the Spirit, asks you why, he, who all your lives hath strove, wooed you to embrace his love. Emphasis added. His hymn, Depth of Mercy offers a prayer to God, Now incline me to repent, let me now my sins lament, now my foul revolt deplore, weep, believe, and sin no more. Emphasis added. In Roman Catholic theology No one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Every time we begin to pray to Jesus it is the Holy Spirit who draws us on the way of prayer by his prevenient grace." The Second Council of Orange of 529 stated that faith, though a free act, resulted even in its beginnings from the grace of God, enlightening the human mind and enabling belief. In Canon 23 it is said that God prepares our wills that they may desire the good. Canon 25 states, "...in every good work, it is not we who begin." But he God first inspires us with faith and love of him, through no preceding merit on our part, prevenient grace from the Latin to come before, was discussed in the fifth chapter of the sixth session of the Council of Trent 1545 which used the phrase, a dei per dominum Christum isum preveniente gratia, rendered, a predisposing grace of God through Jesus Christ. Those who turn from God by sins are disposed by God's grace to turn back and become justified by freely assenting to that grace. Biblical texts Scriptures used to support the doctrine include NT quotes from Wesley's translation, unless noted. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 ESV before I formed you in the womb I knew you, and before you were born I consecrated you." Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 3 KJV. I have loved thee with an everlasting love, therefore with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Ezekiel chapter 34 verses 11, 16 ESV. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak." Luke 19 verse 10, "...for the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost." John 6 verse 44, "...no man can come unto me, unless the Father who hath sent me, draw him." John chapter 12 verse 32, and I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all peoples to myself. Romans chapter 2 verse 4. The goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 NASB. In him, you also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation—having also believed, you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise. Philippians chapter 2 verses 12 to 13 Less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 work out your own salvation with fear and trembling for it is God that worketh in you according to his good pleasure both to will and to do 1 John chapter 4 verse 19 We love him because he first loved us 
Titus chapter 2 verse 11, "...for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men." John chapter 3 verses 14 to 18, "...and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life." For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. John chapter 11 verses 25 to 26 Jesus said unto her I am the resurrection and the life he that believeth in me though he were dead yet shall he live and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die Revelation chapter 22 verse 17 And the spirit and the bride say come and let him that heareth say come and let him that is a thirst come and whosoever will let him take the water of life freely Topic. In other sources Topic. Every time we begin to pray to Jesus it is the Holy Spirit who draws us on the way of prayer by His prevenient grace. Number 2670 Catechism of the Catholic Church. That grace is preceded by no merits. A reward is due to good works, if they are performed, but grace, which is not due, proceeds, that they may be done. Street. Prosper. Can. 18. Number 191 Council of Orange 2 AD. 529 Second Council of Orange. Topic. Objections to the doctrine. Topic. Calvinists often object to prevenient grace, claiming it allows for Pelagianism or semi-Pelagianism. Arminius recognized the possibility of this objection. Theologian Robert E. Passarelli writes, quoting Arminius, that What Arminius meant by prevenient grace was that grace that precedes actual regeneration and which, except when finally resisted, inevitably leads to regeneration. He was quick to observe that this assistance of the Holy Spirit is of such sufficiency as to keep at the greatest possible distance from Pelagianism. Calvinists have their own doctrine of prevenient grace, which they identify with the act of regeneration and which is immediately and necessarily followed by faith. Because of the necessity of salvation following this dispensation of prevenient grace, it is called irresistible grace. Wesleyan prevenient grace also contrasts with the Calvinist understanding of common grace by which God shows general mercy to everyone Matt. 5 restrains sin, and gives humankind a knowledge of God and of their sinfulness and need of rescue from sin. Common grace is thus said to leave people without excuse. Arminians object that Calvinist common grace leaves people absolutely incapable of coming to God a point on which Calvinists agree and thus do not believe it leaves them without excuse. Calvinists further maintain that when the Bible speaks of humanity's condition of total depravity, of spiritual death, it speaks of it as an actuality, not a hypothetical condition that prevenient grace resolves for everyone, as they believe the Wesleyan doctrine teaches. Calvinists see all people as either dead in their sins or alive in Christ EPH, 2 and they see the Wesleyan doctrine of prevenient grace as creating a third state, neither dead nor alive. Calvinists understand, dead in sin to mean absolutely unable to choose God, whereas Arminians understand it to mean the state of being separated from God by sin, but capable of choosing God. Some Calvinists and others derisively refer to the Wesleyan concept of prevenient grace as universal enablement. They characterize the Wesleyan view as teaching that God has restored to every individual the ability to seek after God and choose salvation and as not being justified by the Bible. They argue that because this grace is supposedly given to all alike, the determining factor in salvation becomes the will of man. Calvinists believe that Wesleyans teach that God seeks all people equally, and if it weren't t for the fact that some were willing to respond to his promptings and persuasions, no one would be saved. They see this dependence on the will and choice of the individual as a good work required for salvation and thus an implicit rejection of salvation by grace alone. Conversely, in Calvinism it is singularly God 
s own will and pleasure that brings salvation see monergism lest salvation be, at least in part, of ourselves, in contrast to Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 to 9. Wesleyans counter these objections by claiming that God has initiated salvation through prevenient grace, and while human beings still maintain God-given free will to respond to that initiative, salvation is still initiated and ultimately activated by God through justifying grace. Topic: <laughs> Comparison among Protestants. Topic: This table summarizes the classical views of three different Protestant beliefs. Topic References Topic Topic Bibliography Topic Sermon number forty four Original Sin by John Wesley Sermon number eighty five On Working Out Our Own Salvation by John Wesley Sermon number one hundred five on Conscience, by John Wesley Sermon No. 128, Free Grace, by John Wesley Wesley on Salvation, A Study in the Standard Sermons 1989, by Kenneth J. Collins, Chapter 1, Prevenient Grace and Human Sin, ISBN 0-310-75421-6. Total Corruption and the Wesleyan Tradition, Prevenient Grace by Donald Dorr, Irish Theological Quarterly 31 303–321. Prevenient Grace, A Wesleyan View. By Leo G. Cox, Journal of Evangelical Theological Society September 1969, 143–149. A Wesleyan Holiness Theology 1994 by J. Kenneth Grider, Chapter 14, The First Work of Grace. ISBN 0-8341-1512-3 John Wesley's Message for Today 1983 by Steve Harper, Chapter 3, Power to Begin, Prevenient Grace. ISBN 0-310-45711-4 Practical Divinity, Theology in the Wesleyan Tradition 1982 by Thomas A. Langford, Chapter 2, Wesley's Theology of Grace. ISBN 0-687-07382-0 Responsible Grace, John Wesley's Practical Theology 1994 by Randy Maddox, Chapters 3-7 ISBN 0-687-00334-2 Relational Holiness, Responding to the Call of Love 2005 by Thomas J. Ord and Michael Lodahl Beacon Hill Press ISBN 0-8341-2182-4 John Wesley's Scriptural Christianity, A Plain Exposition of His Teaching on Christian Doctrine 1994, by Thomas Oden, Chapter 8, On Grace and Predestination, pp. 243-252 ISBN 0-310-75321-X The United Methodist Hymnal 1989, Prevenient Grace Section, Hymns 337-360 ISBN 0-687-43134-4